So uh, today we'll obviously be learning about Ramadan, uh, etiquettes that are uh, necessary to be observed during the month of Ramadan while you're living in, in a Muslim country, uh, in UAE. Uh, and uh, Mr. Nasif Kayat from Sheikh Mohammed Center for Cultural Understanding. Hello, everyone. Uh, he has kindly agreed to uh, do the presentation for us and uh, he will go through a couple of slides that he has put together and uh, please feel free to ask any questions at any point. Uh, however, we will have a, a Q&A session towards the end of the presentation as well. All right, so uh, my name is Nasif NASIF, uh, Managing Director of Sheikh Mohammed Center of Cultural Understanding, uh, abbreviated SMCCU located in the old historical area, Bastakiya or Fahidi district. Has anyone been there? We are a 15 years old nonprofit organization. His Highness gave us the privileges of opening a house, an old house in the historical district area to be able to uh, bring people in to our culture. 15 years ago, people, people came across us in business. We sat, we did business. When we left business, they talked with each other and they left us alone. It's just like one of those things where we don't know what to talk to them about. So finally, somebody said to me, could you please answer this question for me? I said, fine, sure. He said, how do you keep your white dress clean? <laughs> I said, that's very nice of you. But it's not a dress. We have a name for it. Men don't wear dresses here. I said, oh my god, so sorry. I didn't mean it. I said, no offense. I'm just messing with you. Our wives don't do laundry, OK? Don't worry about it. And we began to explain how it is cost effective. And we have, you know, a dozen and a half of them. And you got back up. But you know, you wear it two, three months, and you exchange it, $30, $40 average. Until today, with Dubai where it is, we leave it or not, we still buy the whole thing for less than $60. It's not bad. I don't think you can find an Italian suit for 60 bucks, <laughs> right? It looks like an Italian suit all the time. Then they got the courage to ask us more questions which will be, then how come all the men wear white and you make your wives wear black? I say, we make our wives wear black? You really think the men tell women what to wear? <laughs> I always ask men, raise your hand if you tell your wife what to wear every day. No men ever tell their wife. Is it true? Ladies here, since we have lots of ladies. <laughs> Are you told by your boyfriend or husband what to wear every day? No. It's the other way around. You tell us what to wear. We dare to even mess with it. So how come they're wearing black? I always say, what's wrong with black? It's elegant, it's beautiful, Grammy Award tuxedos are black. Every time you try to think of the answer, you actually rethink of how you really perceive things. And that's why we called our program Open Doors, Open Minds. I promise you not to be offended by any way you ask the question, or by how you ask it, or by whatever the question is. And I want you to have open minds. I'm not here to convince you that my way of life is better than yours. Even though I can convince you that white is better than pants and shirts. <laughs> and this is the way Jesus, peace be upon him, used to dress. Not just Arabs or GCC countries. But the concept here is we want to learn about each other, and it's just simply that. That's it. Yeah. We're going to talk about Ramadan. Because Ramadan is an element of a whole concept. Culture, traditions, and religion, they are always entwined. But religion here is a major influence, and Islam, one of its elements is fasting. So today we're going to talk about that element, Ramadan, significance of Ramadan, and fasting, who and who is not to fast, and typical Ramadan activities. Eid or Fitr, which is the marking of the end of Ramadan, and working with Muslim colleagues, which hopefully we'll get to learn about that. What is Ramadan? Ramadan is the ninth month of the lunar calendar. Lunar calendar is how we work before we invented Gregorian. Ramad, it means hat. It's not that God chose this month because the word Ramad means hat. It is the act inside of it is what was chosen to be inside this month. So Ramadan is the month, and God chose the act of fasting inside this month. But this month rotates. So sometimes it will come in the summer, sometimes it will come in the winter. Every 33 years, it will rotate in the same place. That's lunar calendar. So can you spot the moon? There it is. Can you see it? 30 minutes old. Look at that. This is on the internet. Can you see it? Can you? 
Yes. Yes. That's about 50 minutes, they estimate like so. There it is, 90 minutes. And there it is, 24 hours old. Ramadan, again, the act inside Ramadan, which is fasting, is one of the five pillars of worship. Not the concept of being a Muslim, you have to fast, or is fasting prescribed in all Muslims? This is something where we become confused. To pray is, as a Muslim you have accepted, so therefore you commit your prayer. But really to be a Muslim, to be a Hindu, to be a Buddhist, to be a Christian, to be a Jew, is what? What is that? Come on, talk to me so we can finish this quick, because then I'll get back to this and it's going to make more sense. What is it when somebody says, oh, I'm Christian? But wait, I'm Catholic. Oh, I'm a Jew. But wait, I'm Orthodox. I'm not Hasidic. Hmm? What is that? Hinduism, Buddhism, how many divisions do we have? Judaism, Christianity, Islam. What is that? Who's communist here? Huh? Yeah, beliefs. beliefs? Set of beliefs. Set of beliefs, which means ideology. Right? A way of life. Is anybody here socialist or communist? How many, anybody here capitalist? All of you are capitalists, what are you talking about? <laughs> we are all capitalists. Life is all about, you know, money and shopping and uh, career and future. Yeah, it's all about success. That's capitalism. That's an ideology. That's the one we are mostly living by, where on the other hand, we have capitalists and socialists saying, my way is better than your way. You know, in the old days before we invented socialism and capitalism, it was, are you a Christian, or a Jew, or a Muslim? It's, what is your way of life? But Jews, Christians, and Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, who believed in God, they understood there is a message, very clear. It says, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not lie. And it says, take care of thy neighbor. That is a concept that the Creator, the Lord, who created us, mankind, you have a reason to research and try to figure out, does he exist or not? If he does exist, you have an option to think of him scientifically or emotionally. Scientifically, look at the universe. Emotionally, if you are in deep trouble, like the airplane is about to crash, it's shaking, and everybody, the mask comes down, and you put the mask, and they tell you, put your head between your legs. What do you say? But I say, when you're in trouble and you are uh, shaking, what do you say, oh God? I say something. <laughs> I say someone. <laughs> or somebody, right? It's usually a concept. He said, if you accept me, then I want you to understand that as a human being created by me, earth, solids, liquids, huh? I give you something very special. It's called choice, free will. So the concept here is when you declare, you declare that you accept the Lord of mankind, the one and only, right? And that his prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last messenger. Later on, you start praying five times a day. Do some Muslims pray? Some Muslims don't pray. But you have accepted, and now it's time to work. Homework, grades, A, B, C, D, you flunk. This is all life is all about. We are different levels, we are different people. Everybody has to commit in their own way. We are not <coughs> the judges of each other. He said, I am the judge. I created you from male and female made you into pairs, nations, and tribes, so you may know one another. And the best amongst you, the finishing of the verse, is the most righteous, and I am the judge of your heart. So we leave it up to him to judge. We don't judge. Zakah, which is not charity, but you purify your love affair with worldly things. So two and a half percent of excess wealth. Like for the ladies, I tell them, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Too many, is the answer usually. How many pairs is? My wife always tells me, stop talking about my person. <laughs> but if you have too many of anything, whether it's cash, gold and silver, or watches, or whatever wealth it is, and you don't need it, and you don't utilize it, it's called hoarding. Then two and a half percent of its value must go to the poor. Once a year, you must evaluate. If you use all your purses, you use all your gold, you invest your money, and you sell and buy stocks, you don't have to pay, even if you are a billionaire. But if you are a hoarder, you have to pay two and a half percent of your what? Excess wealth that you are storing while others are not benefiting from it. Good? It's a concept, very deep concept. Number four, Siyam, which is fast. I'm going to see today why Siyam. 
And last but not least, number five, Hajj pilgrimage. Whether you are Bill Gates, Snoopy Dog, 50 Cent, or Brad Pitt, or Sheikh Mohammed, or Sheikh King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, if you go to Mecca in this place, everybody dressed the same, everybody does the same, no difference between anyone. Now let's go to Siyam and begin the concept of, or significance of Ramadan. Month in which Quran was revealed. So it's, it's a significant month in a way. So therefore, in that month, the Holy Quran, the final update, the final manual was revealed. Special month of fasting, which is abstaining from lawful and unlawful, I will explain. Repentance, oh God, please forgive me. You know, might as well, if you forget the 11 months this month, you have to. Hopefully you will be accepted or you remember to repent. Increased prayer, that is your job, what is you, what's required of you, and increased charity to remind you that there are others who are not as fortunate as you are. Also, at the end of this month, there becomes festival Eid. So therefore, Eid comes, but it has principle of what is it supposed to, it's really at the end of the month, to be uh, grateful that we passed, hopefully, through such a uh, workout. Let's put it this way. But Taqwa, folks, let's call it God conscious, consciousness, uh, self-discipline. When you become conscientious of your surrounding, if you become um, self-aware of your action and your character, your demeanor, this is it. Then you protect yourself from falter, from making mistakes. How does that happen? See, spiritual ob objectives and benefits is that the Muslim draws closer. This is what God said, drink, drink. But the concept here is to become aware. Folks, in Ramadan, you know, like when you are dieting, have you ever tried to diet? And then everywhere you go, you say, oh, I'm not gonna, that's okay, I'm not gonna have that. Oh, I, I cannot have dessert. Everybody doesn't leave you alone, they keep saying, why not? Well, go ahead, come on, you try it, you just try one piece. You go sit with people who are shisha smoking, and you're not a smoker. Come on, just take a hit. Just take one, try it. They don't leave you alone, I don't smoke. Just try it. We don't leave each other alone. You go to the gym, oh, come on, let me see, let me see. Yeah, yeah, you can there. Right? In Ramadan, from, in a week from now, everybody must be good. So the whole community, nobody can bug anybody. All of us, all of a sudden, change. 180 degrees, technically speaking. How? You abstain from lawful and unlawful. Lawful is water. Now you value that we have water. Most people, when they want to ask me a smart question, they say, so what are you going to do when you run out of oil? See, I'll be dead, I'm not worried about it. It's 100 years from now at least. But we had no oil 40 years, so what's the big deal? But we are worried about what? Guys, in Dubai we don't have water, do you know that? It's a plant, it works on what? Machines. Machines do break down. In the old days we were 150,000, we were 50,000. Now Emiratis are 150,000 in Dubai, but we have four and a half million people. Imagine us without water. You know what I'm talking about then. So water is precious. So therefore we must value the food now and not throw it away. And this is something that it's uh, integral to our society. Because we are generous, then we throw the food away. It's amazing. So therefore these two. And then you cannot have a relationship with your spouse. <sighs> Why? We are married. So what's the big deal? When it's not allowed, what does it become? More precious. It becomes desire. My wife looks the best in Ramadan. I realize how beautiful my wife is in Ramadan. I'm like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> because we go on passing by, we be, you know, in the beginning we get down on our knees, we try to become extremely like uh, creative in how we present that surprise with the diamond ring, we fly an airplane, and then later on like Tom Cruise, from jumping in the couch to divorcing her, hiring the lawyer to tell her sorry. You will not be a Scientologist, we done, we cannot love. So therefore, he wants you to value that relationship. And then comes the unlawful. Seven senses, your mouth, zip it. 15 hours, you cannot say one, bo one bad word. No gossip, no backstabbing, no cursing. Ears, you cannot hear to the same thing that comes out of your mouth. Eyes, you cannot look at any unlawful. Like shopping for aid while you're working and getting paid, unlawful. Blameworthy thoughts. You know how sometimes you become angry and you start planning. 
How are you gonna counterfeit her? Or how are you gonna start the conversation by yelling or by you know, demising that person? Stop it. You think you think you boil, you boil, you ill yourself for nothing. Stop it. Because after you come down, you forget about it, then guess what? It's all gone. So therefore the concept becomes the fasting is a principle of the primary objective is to attain this God conscientiousness and to become self-aware, to bring your spirituality up, to now think of what God said, the do's and the don'ts, and begin to become somebody who's more self-aware and begin to pray more and ask for him to guide you. And this is really what it's all about, the five daily prayers. And act, it's an increasing that iman, that faith, that that you know God is watching, so therefore you don't do these things because he's watching, otherwise people are not gonna see you and you can get away with it. And so this is the concept of that exercise. Everybody in the community must do it. It is uh, punctuation, of course, you know, uh, purification of the heart, the soul, improves uh, one's character, hopefully. Throughout the day you are patient, you are ask for forgiveness, charity, kindness, generosity, it depends on the person, but all of this is good. Spiritual aspects, we, ref we refrain, we talked about it, when talks uh, during all hours, who fasts and who doesn't. Who fasts? All Muslims. Who doesn't? Children. If you are below the age of puberty, you don't have to. But I have kids in my family at five years old, I remember. Call him JJ. He started to fast. So we were in the US. And the teacher will call us, will say, my God, uh, kindergarten, does he have to? Like, of course he doesn't have to. She's like, is it okay if I offer him uh, chips like the kids and what? I said, yeah, sure, of course. And his mom will be like, yeah, of course, make him eat, actually. Because we don't want to be, like, taken to the social services, uh, abusers. So, yeah, go ahead. And he will say, no, I'm fasting, like Baba. I want to be like Baba, you know, like that. So, you have to. But not if you can't, because the concept is not to torture us. The concept is to improve us. So a fasting person experiences some of the hardship of the poor and hungry. That's just an addition. But you know, some people in Ramadan they throw food and 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 and. But really, we can feel the pain of the people who are in tents now coming out of Syria. And I hope that we can help in any way we can. Same thing in Africa and all over the world. Physiological effect includes lowering blood sugar. Lately they are saying it kills, uh, the cells die and then you build a new one, so it's very rejuvenating. Okay, whatever it is. But if God said, you do it. Improves strength, endurance. I mean, imagine when you are uh, learning not to. When it's 17 hours, it's 15 hours, but you are struggling and you try very hard and you do it. It teaches, believe me. Because if you are in places like Africa or wherever, it's not guaranteed that after 15 hours you'll be able to. Right? If there is no food, there is no food. Till God knows when. We had this here in the desert. When there was no camels coming in and no ships coming in. Especially in the 30s and the late 30s, 40s and 50s, after the pears were, what, taken away from us when the Japanese invented the pears, culture pears, we lost everything. We used to take the dead pit grind it, boil it to make a hot drink, to cool down in the hot weather, and bake it to make it into a cookie and leave it in our mouth from starvation, or wrap our tummy, tie it with a rope. So again, we can make it, it's just a matter of training yourself. Benefits of fasting, how character building is achieved. Actually, Ramadan comes, like I said, it's a month, 29, 30 days, we all go to the gym together, from crack of dawn till, you know, sunset. Fasting, it's to attain self-consciousness, restraints, all these things. Simply, folks, ladies and gentlemen, don't get angry. And then become God-fearing, become uh, afterlife accountability. You learn it, patience, self-control, self-discipline, responsibility, obedience, and purification of the soul. And typical Ramadan activities, suhoor, which is the meal before crack of dawn, iftar, Zayarat, which is visitation, it's all about socializing because it's really about your kin and your blood relatives. And Taraweeh, which is the prayer that keeps you not going to bed at night. The last 10 days it's called Qiyam. 
uh, and there is Qur'at, which is reading Qur'an. But in Ramadan, prayer becomes, even if they don't pray throughout the whole year, in Ramadan they pray. It's just the system of the day. You crack of dawn, you get up, you have suhoor, then iftar, and you do visitation with your family, extra prayer, you read Quran, and you do what you call it, night prayer, when everybody's asleep. It's the other way around now. We stay up all night long, we sleep all day long. It's become really weird. What do you exercise when you're sleeping all day long? What do you become? How do you become more patient? How do you restrain yourself from what? From waking up? See how when things become misunderstood and all of a sudden people just do their own thing? How are you going to get a reward for it? How did you improve? The whole month of Ramadan, you stayed up all night long and you slept all day long. What did you get? Everybody's going to want to travel in this period from one country to another. Flights, and especially the latter part of Ramadan because everybody wants to go to Mecca. More prayers, extra prayer. Mecca is the holy place, just like the Vatican for Catholics. Again, it's a place where people want to go and uh, repent and get closer to God. Uh, everybody has to go to Iftar. So imagine if the whole city of Dubai is eating at 7. Everybody has 7 o'clock. Dinner is ready. So everybody's got to go. So you imagine that if you are at work, uh, it's, we have to work it out, you know, where who leaves what and what time. For us, we rush, we change, we gotta go to mom, we gotta go to cousins, maybe I have to go to relatives in Al Ain, uh, maybe I have people coming over, so I have to prepare and help my wife, otherwise she'd be angry with me that I was late and did not do anything to help her. So it's a little bit pressure, but it's a matter of respecting boundaries and being organized about it. Uh, I think we reduce it here by two hours, right? Uh, it's your, it's your uh, right. If the company does not give it to you, call and report them. Honestly. It's your right to get those two hours, Muslims or non-Muslims. By the way, just in case the company is greedy and playing games with you. You here, under the law of UAE, under the Emirates Dubai, we say two hours. We don't say two hours off for Muslims only. I don't know if you ever heard that. Show me. We say in Ramadan, working hours are two hours less. Here, regardless. But people are greedy, companies are a little bit selfish sometimes. Everybody goes to pray this Eid prayer, but before you say Allahu Akbar, for every member of your family, you must feed a poor member of the community that day. So if in Dubai we have 300,000 wealthy, they have to feed 300,000 poor. In my family, we are seven, five kids and wife and a husband, then I feed seven. Even if you're pregnant, if you have it the morning of Ramadan, the last day, then you pay on his or her behalf a meal for another poor person. It's a system that that day when the community rises and the sun is shining, everybody's happy and everybody has food on the table. See, we miss out. We live in an era where we think everything, we take it for granted. There are people who don't have a meal and that's their concern, it's just to eat. Imagine if that was all your worries, is just to eat. We have a lot more worries, right? But that's the least of our concern. So at least take care of that, since it's the least of yours. Eat uh, activities include prayer, visiting families. We start with the grandparents, then the mom and the dad, then the uncles, the aunts, and then the brothers and the sisters. You cannot skip the order, or you will be asked. If you go to the younger uncle before the older uncle, yeah. you go to the parents before the grandparents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it's protocol. You have to follow it. It's family, you know, ordinance. Sometimes the poor is in your family. Really, in your family. Might be somebody you're angry with, uncle or son or niece, but they are in your family. So you owe it to them at least that day to give them. So therefore, here in Dubai, it's 25 dirham per person. So for a family of seven, you, you pay that 150 and you give it to him and say, Eid Mubarak, out of here. But at least, so hopefully now he'll call you, by the way, thank you so much. Can we talk? We haven't talked in a year. 
this is really what it's all about. It's all, again, you know, this is how we, the way we treat each other. I know my brother, if I send him the money, he'll throw it back in my face, you know? But, uh, so you have to be creative in the way you give it to the closest people. See, that's the problem. The closer they are to you, the more they will be. Is it have to come from you? If you think that's gonna become an issue, make it look like that it's not from you. Let somebody else give it to them. But it's, he doesn't or she doesn't know it's from you. Because not to be known, not to be, because it's all about building. But you know they need, then you give. Ramadan etiquette to avoid the following Muslim colleagues meeting, which includes lunch. Like today I was at um, Freshfield Law Firm. And they had lunch while we were having the presentation. I said, if this was Ramadan, would it really affect a Muslim who's fasting? Ask them. I personally did not even eat with them, although the food smelled very good. But I am capable, as like I said before, DNA depends. But there are people who will drive them mad, smelling the food and not eating it. So ask the people. Ask the people if they are offended by the fact that you are eating in front of them. So the concept is, look at who you are dealing with and don't try to make life worse for them by teasing them and so on and so forth. So lunch, drinking, and making popcorn in the microwave and the whole department smells like popcorn, eating your lunch, you know, talking about food. You know, because start talking about food and the person is hungry, they're gonna have to eat what you just said. So, oh, we ate some nice, beautiful steaks last night. That's it, iftar has to be steaks today. Hello, honey. <laughs> so again, it depends on the person you're talking to. Meeting after five is not necessarily. Department parties, social events during Ramadan. And Ramadan, again, modesty. So the way we dress, the way we conduct ourselves, simply make it rated G. You know how the movies are rated? Like we always advise at SMCCU. Check Mohammed Center, they say, so what is the dress code in the mall? I said, the mall is a public place, like movies with kids and families. They say, yes. I said, it's okay, it's rated G. Is it how much skin you are showing? No, it is how you conduct yourself. It is character. Because you could be completely covered and walk around like you're ruling the mall, right? Smell from one mile away. The Hermes purse and the Versace shoes, and you're like, come on down. Not what Ramadan is all about. And so therefore, in Ramadan, we emphasize that. Modesty is an act now, not just spoken words. So therefore, the way you eat, the way you drink, the way you conduct yourself, the way you speak, the way you listen, the way you watch, all of it becomes part of how you watch all of it. And uh, it's common to take vacation during the last week of Ramadan. Again, Eid and pilgrimage, it's just simply part. But personally, uh, at Sheikh Mohammed Center, uh, and wherever I go as companies throughout the world, I always say, look, what are the occasions? This is HR responsibility. Let's put everybody their request for those big vacations from now. So we know I'm not going to have an empty company in Christmas or Christmas Eve. There is nobody here. If all my staff is Christian or all my staff wants to have Christmas Eve, what am I going to do? So therefore, put it out and then we rotate. So in government and places like police, we rotate. This year you take Eid, next year you take Eid. This year you do this. So we. Otherwise, what, every Eid you get to work and every Eid he gets to take off? No, we don't have that. Doctors, police, all of these is always requested from day one and they are rotated throughout the year. Cool? So in case, you know, there is a misconception in your company, you can clarify that. At least Eid day has to be off. They has to, because you gotta go to the prayer, you gotta come back, you gotta go kiss your ma, grandma, grandpa's hands, you gotta have breakfast with the family, it's the first day you're breaking your fast. It's gotta be off. Greetings, colleagues, say Ramadan Mubarak, like we said earlier, which is blessed Ramadan. May God accept your deeds. We say lots of things, but this is the simple one. Why not invite the Muslims for iftar? And why not go for iftar? If you're going to go for iftar, I'm asking you and I'm advising you, do not cook, do not go buy gifts from the mall. Just make a dessert. We have to have dessert in Ramadan. From your country, from your culture from something mom taught you, from something you invented. This is for us the most personal, the most 
valuable. Because if you go buy me Louis Vuitton or buy me Mont Blanc, I have to buy you more. You understand the culture? I have to throw the ace card. <laughs> Boker, I have to be 21. You cannot bring and me not bring back to you. So you make it more pressure, stressful. Just bring something simple. Usually I make it easy for my friends. I say, oh, the salad is on you. They go, oh, thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm not worried anymore. See, I knew you were worried. That's why I said salad is on you. You know, what are you good at? So really, let's make it easy on each other. Can you invite me? Ask me. What would you like in your iftar? I don't eat fish, I don't eat steak. OK, that's fine. But also, there are three elements before iftar. Some people have to have soup. Some people have to have leban, yogurt. You know, because it's very hot, we take the yogurt. It's liquid. I don't know if you've seen it in Carrefour and Jamia. We sell it like the Pepsi, like the, the two liter. And it's got salt, extra salt in it, because of the sweat. So that's how we replenish our and rejuvenate. So we are used to, in Ramadan, you have to have the level. When we became air conditioned, I stopped that uh, habit. How people get mad at me? Where is the level? But we didn't sweat today. Okay, yeah, but iftar is not iftar if you have no level. Well, I don't have, what are you gonna do? <laughs> so I learned that always ask. So even we sometimes mess each other up. So soup, leban, date, huh? It just depends on the person. Dates you have to have, water, of course. Uh, some people like to break their fast, pray, and then eat. Because they don't want to eat, and then they go pray, and while they're prostrating the food, you know, indigestion. So some people like, no, I will not be able to pray without eating. Sorry. I would be thinking of food the whole time. So I let them, what, eat first and then pray. Or they might want to eat just a little bit, get up, pray, and then come back. Talk it out. It's better to say, so what's your preference? But again, when we communicate, it's easier rather than uh, predict, anticipate, worry. Try to figure out. Why try to figure out? Just talk about it. Conclusion, Ramadan is a month of fasting, physical abstention, and intensification of acts of worship. And kindness and purification, all these things attain the spiritual objective of self-purification and improvement. Simply after the one month, folks, you have to be a better human being. If you are not, you lost out. So hopefully from puberty to 30 years old, that's enough time for you to become a good human being. Actually, the Lord says till 40. That's your chance. After 40, you don't have much left because two-thirds of your age is already gone. So whatever you have left, Either you accomplish to do good and you leave good behind, or it's almost going to be too late. Concept of how you evaluate life. First 20 years, second 20 years, and the third 20 years, and how you begin to gracefully age. Some begin to be very ill because they can't have nicotine. So all smokers in the company must be considered. You cannot just go smoke outside the door and just walk, reek and smoke by him or her. You know, they're going to lose it. They're going to snap. Because now they just smell it and they can't have it for another 11 hours. I know people who the first thing they do is not eat dates or water. They smoke a cigarette. Again, where is the training for? But it is training. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's lots of little things here and there, but it's up to us. Uh, some people become um, lethargic. I usually try to work it out. Maybe let them come later or come after iftar for to do their work or take their work home. I don't know. But you can come up with something, an alternative of how you can make Ramadan still productive as per the person. Depends. Um, sometimes we have people who are simply <coughs> headache. My wife gets migraines because there is no caffeine. So therefore, she prefers to be pregnant or breastfeeding rather than fast. <laughs> but now we topped it off, Khalas, we're done. So she's going to have to fast this year. But then migraine, if I mess with my wife, she's going to lose her fasting, I'm going to lose it. So I have to be extra patient, extra super nice, and I have to allow her the room to deal with her migraine. They go, by the way, thank you so much for being so patient with me because I know I was not me and I was 
but thank you so much. And this is really also the exercise for you to try and see how you can actually tolerate, withstand abuse, and not react. It's one of the biggest, most precious principles of character. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, who's the strongest? They said, the guy with the biggest muscles. I said, no. He said, who's the strongest? He said, oh, the guy who can carry the most weight. The guy who can travel the longest. The guy who can run the fast. He said, the guy who is, when he's most angered and have the right to reply, but holds himself from replying. Imagine, angered, has the right to reply, and respond, but holds himself from it. Here, it's a happy medium for everybody. We don't want it to become where you don't feel it's Ramadan. We want the atmosphere of the gym in Dubai, okay? On, in the UAE at large, actually. We want that atmosphere. We want, even if I am in the mall shopping for Eid, it's still Ramadan, it's not Eid yet. Uh, I know the food court is open, but there is a door, there is a gate, and I know that's fine, no problem, but I don't want it to be. Can your kids, little kids, three, four years old, walk around with a sippy cup? Yes. Can they have McDonald's French fries? Hey. They smell good. <laughs> they smell really good. <laughs> they will drive me crazy. <laughs> fresh fries. So my 10 years old will be like crying. And I will have to have McDonald's for iftar that day. Because they will be thinking of McDonald's the whole day. So it's all about how you become what conscientious and self-aware of your surrounding. You are so mindful of others. Ladies and gentlemen, mindful of others. It's not easy. It's the, uh, usually, we are the other way around. We care less how others think of us. Now you're thinking of others. So it's, it's worth it. Try it. Try it for two days, three days.